hey guys what's up i hope so you're doing super awesome and you are you are very happy today by the way what we are going to do today today we are going to explore uh, a database which is called rethink db it's a real time database so i would definitely share my screen let me close all the other tabs which i have i don't know what was what was i doing still so uh rethink uh, db that's what we are going to do all right so this is the database it says the open source database for real time web the reason why it is called real time is literally you can stream data you can literally know when the data got inserted and when you uh, and there are, there are client side libraries as well which will help you to do this up very very easily and you do not have to query data like other databases right so it's a very cool database so we'll be looking at this right now so and this has a very cool uh, a query languages as well so if you know javascript you know how to query this database you know there is map there is reduce all those functions which we use in the javascript so the next target is basically very simple what we have to do is you have to install it very obvious right just go to install a rethink db and you can select your um, your operating system from here so if you are on any of these you can select there are official packages for windows i think installation is a bit tedious yeah i'm not sure how to install it on windows you can just give a google search and see how to buy by the way if you are on linux or osx on linux it is very easy you can just no i'm mean, on mac it is very easy what you have to do is you have to simply run a command called brew install rethink db that's pretty much it once you do that you it will be installed on um, on linux i think it would be a uh, sudo apt uh, apt install uh, rethink db i think so if that is not the case what you can do is you can search for how to install rethink db on your particular platform it is if it is already installed it's quite awesome the next thing what we'll be doing is uh, we uh, we will like activate the rethink db will uh, will make it up and running right so we'll we'll write rethink db and hit enter so now you can see over here it says server started that means our server of the rethink db has been started so what you can do is you can go to localhost uh, port 8080 which is the default port for uh, rethink db and you can see your dashboard all the traffic going and all the clusters which you have created all the tables everything basically is here right so uh yes and remember all your data will be in the folder where you started this so yeah so the next thing what we'll do is we will be uh creating a project where from where we can access this rethink db and we can add or remove data so for now let's go to projects there's a folder called project inside projects right then what we'll do is we'll create a folder called learn rethink right so this will be uh, uh this will be actually we'll be using this for creating our api let's quickly uh initialize this i mean initialize a, a node project over here by the way if you don't already know uh, there is uh, I think npm is there and yarn is there and there is one pnpm is there so three package managers I'm using yarn over here you can use npm of course just uh, if you're using npm run npm init slash y yarn similar command yarn init slash y and that's simple and if you want to just give me a second okay my okay so we have initialized our project there was a call and my friend was disturbing me so let I just shut him off right so, okay so then what we'll do is we'll uh, simply add rethink db so we'll say npm install rethink db that will basically add rethink db to wait what oh now it's yarn add rethink db so install is in npm so if you're in npm you can run npm install rethink db but i'm in yarn so i have to add this so next what we'll do is we'll open this project in visual studio code by the way it is very obvious you, node and npm should be installed on your machine in order to run anything of this sort okay so here is our project created right the next first thing which we'll do is we, there is like you must be thinking like how the like how the initial interaction works so i'll just give you an idea there's a data explorer right so you have something called r which is your rethink db instance all right and then first of all what you can do is you can select your database so you can say db and there is already a test database created by default so you don't need to create this so that's test database you can select that see it's all like javascript right so then you can see you can say um, 
uh, a table so you can select a table from this let's say this one so i select a table called students right right so i have a students table then you can say filter filter is like just uh, like you can specify the conditions which you want and if i just uh, hit enter you can see oh wait there's something mistake test.students does not exist because i haven't created this table so what we'll do is we'll run create table first i think there is create table command uh mm, table create you can see the second one right and then you can you can give the name of the table so let's say create a student table i just want to give you an idea how this works students table right and once once i do that what you can do is you can run this and you can see the table created and the configuration changes you can see over here right so we have successfully created a table called students now you can what you can do is you can select this table and insert data in it so you can say select sorry table and then the table name which we have created which is students right it is very simple it's like javascript right so students then dot insert uh, there's a function called insert over here you can see right so uh, now the question is what will you insert so in an array you can just specify let's say i want to insert the name which is j uh, class which is uh, something else let's say uh, class is like uh, i'm in third grade fourth grade and what else could we have we could have like a phone number right so we could have a, like any phone number right similarly we can have like other information as well so name uh, let's say rahul right and then we can have a class and we could have like let's say he's in fifth grade and the phone number is something like this one right by the way phone number should be a string right similarly i can go over here as well say this should be a string and as soon as i hit uh, enter for this right you will see oh there is an error i missed a bracket somewhere oh i missed a bracket over here so this like the i haven't like ended my array that was bad so i think now now this should work yeah you can see uh so we have inserted two items uh, if you want to see all those items how will you do that so we have inserted these two students right so there are two ways you know you can go to your dashboard you can see one table created and all the stuff over there so you can go to tables you can see students tables which we have created and you can definitely explore this to see the data which we have so only one oh click okay we have the two data class name and the phone number so we've inserted both of the data very very successfully how will you fetch that using data explorer it's very very simple what you have to do is r.db and uh, the name of the database so here the name of the database is test and dot table uh, so the table name is students All right and the next is uh, we need what do we need let's call it filter right filter is like the find operation if you have used uh, mongodb right so if you just you hit enter and i've given empty because i don't want any filter to be applied and you can see all the data over there by the by the way you can definitely write some data so you can i say i just want the students who are in class four you can do that and definitely you'll get the students who are in class four this is dope as amazing like this is very amazing right so all these commands could directly be implemented by the way there is a rethink db um, like a rethink db npm package so this to this package what you can do is you can directly access your database you'll have a rethink db instance and you can create a like a connection and uh, do a lot of things you can you can definitely check the api documentation over here in rethink db it's quite awesome but what we're going to do today is we are going to use an orm for rethink db which is going to make our work very very easier right so here it is very low level imagine you know uh, for mongodb what you have you have a, the mongodb official npm package but you don't use that most often because it does not have a lot of it has a lot of functionalities but the thing is it is very low level right so we need something high level so that our work is easier and we do not have to write a lot of code so the solution regarding this is there is an orm i think it's name i don't forgetting its name rethink db orm let's see it was it was it was huh it is called tinky t-i-n-k-y tinky quite funky name t-i-n-k-y tinky uh rethink db right so you can see this is uh what rethink db is shutting down Today I have a sad news. Oh, what? Oh, at last. We don't care. What? Do you think DB is shutting down? It's not an open project. Oh, that's sad. So uh, uh, let's 
let's write tinky ORM. Right. So we'll see why is like is really I, I I'm not aware of this that like rethink DB has has. Shut down. Okay, so what we can do is we can go to third party and here we'll have ha huh, you can see Tinky over here, right? So we can use this one. By the way, I just want to see is this uh, really close? Rethink DB GitHub. Like is this really there's no contribution to Rethink DB now? Oh man, it's still active. Who says it has closed? See, nine days ago there was a contribution. So it's still active. Don't worry. Things are all right. Okay. So, and you know, a lot of very, very popular websites like Spectrum is using it. So, Spectrum, this one. I, I'm not aware of the right spelling. Okay. So there's a website called Spectrum, uh, which actually uses the Rethink DB for this operation. So it's, it's quite cool. Uh, trust me. Okay. So we'll be using this Tinky thing. Uh, how how this works is very simple first of all you have to install tinky then you can just you can have models uh, similar to uh, mongoose and you can just perform operations on those models so it's quite awesome so uh, what is the api which we are going to build so let's make our api for the bank so what we will do is we can you can create users you can have transactions there it will be a simple api uh, just to learn ething db right uh, this is uh, not an active project i don't know looks good not sure should we use it or not oh this is very confusing man oh this is very old repository like last last contribution was like 5th of november 2019 uh okay uh, let's use this you know we'll we'll see what can be done this is the documentation which we had so let's add tinky to our project so we'll say yarn add tinky so we have yeah, i think it's thinky thinky because i think db rethink db so thinky why am i calling it tinky i don't know it's 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 tinky okay forget it <laughs> we don't care okay so the next thing what we'll do is we'll create an src folder where, where, where all our source code will be lying and we'll be creating an index.js file where we'll be writing everything right now as because we are creating an api we need an api um what an api thing so what we'll do is we will say yarn add express because we'll definitely need express what what more things could we need we could need mongoose we could need cars okay so let's see add all these if you oh wait why have i hidden Mong mongoose you want to remove mongoose oh i just you know this this habit of working with mongodb will it's it's hard right so uh what else do you do i need do i need course mongoose rethink uh what have i added uh there was there was a package which was used ah morgan remember uh, this this is a very good package for logging and stuff so we can log our requests uh, for logging like winston is also very good but that will be like too much for this project so we'll not go for that so we'll uh, i'll write st start writing project start writing the code so first of all uh, let me let me let me let me transfer myself to the other side so that you can see things much more easily yeah okay so now i think you can see right so i'll i'll just say express is equal to require uh, uh wait uh what am i doing okay express all right and then uh um, uh then i think we have morgan to require morgan right if you don't know what morgan is we'll definitely be discussing that so just give me some time till i reach that point where i can describe this to you okay so we have express morgan what else would we need we need course i think so we'll say require course what else do we need we need express morgan course what what else do we need that's it right so we'll initially uh, like uh, our main app right so it will be app is equal to express so that's the main app which we want so next thing what we'll do is we'll say uh, we'll make our 404 route handler no first of all all the middleware is over here 
all the middle wares over here right so let's say app dot list app dot use the first middleware which we want to use is course right so first of all we'll be having universal cost access you can change this if you wish like definitely you can have like over here you can you can have an object you can have an origin you can have an array where you can specify http a double uh, haha dot com whatever whatever is your front end you can definitely specify there but for now with open arms i'll i'll invite everyone to talk to my backend because i'm very generous app dot use uh, then we'll have morgan now morgan will you have to select like what type of logging you actually want so i'll go for common because things should be common and then we'll have what what what's next what do we need next maybe we'll we'll need some json parsing so for that we'll say you uh, express dot json and we'll uh, also say express uh, dot url len encoded extended through now what this will do is this will help us to parse form data so we can pass that very very easily do we have format on save on no it doesn't it is not on man it should have been on which is the uh, we are using prettier right uh, let's 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 fuck this up oh it's not working man uh format document ah, configure now we'll select prettier and this will work yeah this works now okay so next thing what we'll do is we'll uh, create a 404 route handler 404 route handler by the way technically you should do it in a different uh, javascript file but we are lazy so we'll do it over here so we'll say all so uh, actually in this place at this place we'll be having all our routes uh, but if these routes are not hit we'll directly go to this one so which will help us to say like okay hey man the route which you are searching does not exist so we'll have a request and a response i think we only need response we do not need a request so we'll just underscore that because we don't want to use that so we'll say hmm what will we say response dot status 404 dot send a message uh, the route you are searching for does not exist right so this will do what is uh, it will simply say that say hey man see whatever route you, you are searching for it does not exist please get lost go to your home pack up your bags that's pretty much it and the next thing we'll be having is the baddest thing which you would never want to get like hit which is the error handler right so we'll have something called okay error handler this is how you create the four parameters which you need to give first is error then there is um, the request then there is a response then there is a next right so if you give these four parameters uh, express will know that okay this is an error handler this is by default you get an error handler but that is like not very good why that is not very good because that error handler will actually show your file addresses and paths which is bad right so introduction basically so uh, let's log the error if it is not like if the things are not uh, prod so you could have a constant file but i don't know why i don't i don't i want to make a constant file so let's call it is prod right so if this is prod we'll say uh, process dot env dot uh, node node env is not okay is equal to production if that is true then we have like we are on the is prod like the we are in the production version of that so we'll say is prod equal equal to uh, is if it is true then only do this console log right so this is like very awesome way of avoiding if statements right uh, the next thing what we'll do is we'll say response dot status and if you know server status is 500 if it is an internal server error so we'll say send and the message is there was some internal server error please try again later yeah so we'll say we have some internal server sorry we are we are we are we are found we don't know how this, this like, what was the situation so here is our here is our um, error handler that's super cool the next thing what we'll do is you know just to learn rethink db we are going through all this mess i don't know if you want to skip this and directly go to the rethink db part you can definitely go there no issues at all right so the next thing what we'll have is uh we, we will listen uh 
we, we need to specify some port and the port should be like a, a constant over here const port is equal to process dot env dot port if it is there then it's okay if it is not there then use port it not 8080 port 8000 right we cannot use 8080 because it's the rethink db is running on that so we cannot specify that right so the next thing what we'll do is listen uh app dot listen on the port and if it is successfully start the listening then this callback will be called and what we'll do is we'll we'll simply log that a server started successfully right? you know so this is done so we have uh this is done the next thing we also need one more package which is a uh, nodemon so if you don't know about nodemon it's a very good package i'll just tell you it actually automatically restarts your server if you make any change to the file so during development you do not have to stop your server and start it again and again and again and again so it helps a lot you'll see how does it help uh, you know just in a while so yeah and if you're thinking like why well, well, yeah, come on you have left the routes empty don't worry we'll definitely be having a routes not js right and and we'll have all our services over here directly right so as because we have a small app we'll not have like folders like 10 different folders for all the services so everything is in the sing this single file so let's let's have the router over here and let's call it like require express right so we have the router and you can say router is equal to a router and let's export this up so how will you export this we'll say module dot exports is equal to router right and then you can have router dot um, get request aha uh -huh. that's a demo request you know we'll just for testing we'll have a request and a response for now we'll not be using request but still like let it be there send message this works all right so this is just for testing right so this this route is just for testing so don't don't get freaked out okay i know come on this route how we'll be using this in this page simply uh, say routes is equal to require uh dot slash routes right so we, as because we have uh, uh, okay so this is like routes so this will refer to this one and how will you use it it's very simple so you can specify a main route path so you can say app dot use something like uh, slash api slash version one if any request comes to this uh, give it to routes right so then what will happen is every request which will be coming from uh, coming to slash api slash version one will go to this and any other request will go to 404 either 404 or error handler if there is an error so that's pretty much cool so let's see does it work or not how will we test that it works or not by the way there's many, there are many ways to test it you can like I, I can definitely test it on my browser right now because it's a git request but i would recommend you to go for this and install thunder client it's a very good extension and it could help you to test uh, your apis very very uh, you know in very efficient ways it's, it's cool trust me so you can see you are we have a new tab over here we'll, we'll go to new request we'll close this one and we'll we want to go to http double dot slash slash localhost port 8000 uh, slash api slash version one and i know i have like, haven't served started my server so please give me some time just, okay so slash haha so that's the place where we actually want to make the request next thing what we're going to do is start the server of course and for that we need to actually set up a package.json file a little bit what we're going to do is we have we'll have a scripts section where we'll have a dev section uh, where we'll say nodemon in src slash index dot yes it's pretty much easy we could have a production script as well so let's write this so we can say src slash in, uh, uh, node src slash index dot yes now it's the moment of truth that have we committed any mistake or it's all working fine let's see hey come on here it's 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 not giving me the terminal yeah there you there you have there i have the soft terminal but i don't like this terminal a lot so let's use the terminal which we have over here right so we'll say yarn dev which will start the development server yay server started successfully so let's let's see do we do we do we actually get the request over here so yeah let's see this works and we even have logs over here so we even have like this this was a get request to this location and uh, this was the log right oh wait why am i moving the 
server yeah that's fine okay so the next thing what we'll do is we, we actually have to use rethink db so the first thing which we have to do is create the users right so that's very important how will we create it? how will we be creating the users so it's easy should be easy if you remember we have created tinky right so we could have like a folder called models it's modal or modal 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 i don't know if i'm wrong you can let me know in the comment if it is model or al el i don't know i'm confused okay so we can have user.js where we will have like user model and what we'll do is we'll go to the tinky do documentation we'll see how does this create so we have type and tinky let's let's copy this up we have a call just give me a give me a second so let's start uh, let's start by copying this these two lines to our to our model so that we can start creating the tinky tinky thing let me move this to my other screen so that i can keep referencing this while creating the tinky model it's tinky man it's not tinky come on uh forget it okay so the first thing which we'll be having is it's called var what let uh user is equal to tinky dot create model right and then you give the model name which like my table name so which will be user right and then i think this copy is like just the mongoose it will create a user's tables because i'm not sure it will have a u it will have an id so every user will have some id that's for sure then it will have like a first name right which will be string and it will have a last name which will again be a string it will have a what would could have it could have a email id which would have a string it could have a amount which is there in his account as in string okay that's awesome there's next thing what we can do is we can just say that um, we can export this so we can say exp uh, module dot exports is equal to uh, user yeah so we have user thing exported by the way where is this type used uh, okay so we can even use this type i'll just tell you where so let's say this is an id right so you can say type dot oh, wait this is not good okay so you can say type dot string right and there are other functions as well so you can say min something like that so that will basically do a lot of things uh okay can we can we do this why do we need to have let can we have let over here yes so we have the string then again we can have type dot string uh right then you can say type dot string again right this will be type dot email right so it should be of email type and then again the amount will be of type dot number i think so i'm not sure this should be the thing right so then the, we have the user what we can do is next is we can import this uh, in the service file and we can just start using this so we can have like um, a function so we can say let um, create user function now this will take user detail right it it it, it takes user details and what we, what what we can do is we can just uh, we can just write a check over here or we can write it in the route let's write it in the route let's don't care about that over here so this will do what is we just have to import the uh, the user from our model not from our model it will require uh model where is the oh not over here come on so we have to go to model slash user that will be the user next thing what we can do is we can say uh okay so save a new post with its author hmm so what we can do is simply we can say let user is equal to new user right and we can specify all the information which we need about the user so first of all uh, rather than doing this what we can do is there, there's a smaller way you can just pass the user details over here right and uh okay so there's one more thing right which is id this id you don't have to specify this id 
uh, this ID will be auto populated with a random ID, right? So that's pretty much awesome. So we have the user, right? So you can say user dot save, right? That will save the user, just like uh, okay. So this this function called save all. So save all, right? And then this, this is a promise which results into res uh, a result. So what we can do is we can just uh, make this function an async function, and we can uh, save the result in an await right and we can even have a try catch block over here so if there is any error we can just capture this right so if there is any error uh will 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 what will do oh let's not do this i mean there's a there's a better option to do this like let's remove this async what we can do is we can return a promise right we can have resolve and reject all right we can have a resolve and a reject we can just uh, cut this paste this over here and we could have like this whole thing as an async right right and next thing what we can do is we can just uh, we can just uh, reject this if there is an error so we'll say well we'll pass the error over there and if things are all right we'll resolve it with the result right so there you go we have created the create user function so now the next thing what we have to do is we have to use it so before using it we'll have to export this how will you do that we'll say module dot uh, dot exports because we'll have multiple exports from this file so what we'll do is we'll just uh, say create user like this so what we'll do is we can we can export multiple things there will be multiple functions at this place most probably so in the route section what we'll do is we'll we'll have a route which will be uh, wait not this uh we have router right so we'll have a route called post request because uh and this will be create user which will help us to create the user next thing what we'll do is uh we could have like a request and a response and a next function right so if there is any error uh and what we can do is we can again write a try catch block over here right uh I'll, I'll let you know why actually we are creating a tag log catch log because this is like uh for this promise right so if it rejects we'll send it we'll be sending it to next which will go to the error handler but we'll have to first verify the uh, object so we can use joy for that you can write our own it's depends like it's completely okay right so we'll have uh, uh, uh not like this we'll have services right one of the services one of the service which we need is create user right so we have the create user service next thing what we have to do is we have to validate whether uh, the body which is request dot body has all the objects which we need or not so if uh, let's say errors let's let's take create an uh, create an array of errors so if there is any errors we'll be storing it in this and if there is not none of them uh, we'll will will send all the data to to the create user function so what we'll do is we'll just first start verifying from here and why to do this all these when uh, we can do this very very easily with joy let's add joy i think things will be very very easier uh, for for validating users if we'll have joy so let's call it let joy is equal to require joy right once you have joy what what you can do is it's very cool so you can define a schema and then validate on that schema so you can say uh, validation is equal to joy dot object it should be an object right and next thing what we'll do is we can you can specify that okay uh, this is an object so what what all things should it have so this should have a name that's very very necessary so that will be joy dot string so it should be in string and then you can chain it with as many functions as you want so you can say minimum maximum email id whatever you want right so we have name let's uh, put the services below so that we could actually see what all things we actually have to use wait we cannot like this is not useful we actually need the user model right because uh at first oh this, this is not name this is first name right then last name right then uh, email right so that's 
the email and then what you can do is you can say amount so we do not need an amount because uh, so we can set a default to this so you can say joy dot number oh, wait amount cannot be set by user so it's zero by default joy dot defaults dot can i can we apply this to like i don't know okay so the amount will be zero the amount cannot be sent by the user so what we can do is here once we do that we can validate our body so you can say uh error error or error is equal to validation dot validate i think validate async i'm not sure okay so what we can do is request dot body and let's see what does the, this validate async returns so this returns a promise wait we can we do validate only uh what does this return this returns validation result validation result is wait what does this return this returns validation result validation return has error warning and value right so these three things are there so error and value let's take out these two things and uh we could have our work done so error and value right so if there is any error if error right so we'll simply say next error right so there was some error in the validation so we'll we'll say and if there is none so if there is no error first of all if there is any error in the like overall process what we can do is we can simply say next with error okay right so here in the else situation why do we have this one come on get lost yeah so in the else situation what we can have is we can say that okay so we have the value we can pass it to create user so let's do it so we'll have a result uh, await create user and what you can do is you can pass uh so we need amount as well right so value so you can say dot 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 value all right and then you can pass amount as zero initially when the user creates an account the amount will be zero right so then what you can do is you can just say response dot send message uh user created successfully right by the way you should never send server responses in like server callback responses in directly in the request body but i'll do this because i can i mean who cares okay so you should never send these uh like responses which you have in the body that's bad you know there could be sensitive information about your database over there you should not do that but let's send it just for testing we'll remove it later on right so that's the that's uh, pretty much all so the next thing what we'll do is we'll test this how will we test this uh, first of all let's start the server because we stopped it for adding joy for adding joy ah uh, let's add us up have we messed things up yeah of course we did so we said await and we it can only be used in an async function await oh that's not an async function that's shocking right it should things should be fine now uh it says e type dot email doesn't exist so uh it says type dot email doesn't exist so what we can do is like let 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 be string right let be string the reason is we are already validating that it is an email or not in the joy schema so it doesn't like matter okay server started successfully so you can see this server started successfully right and uh, yeah let's send the request and see does it work or not right but wait we haven't created a connection right ah that's an issue we haven't created an connection yet how we are supposed to do that but we haven't created the connection right so okay here are some here are some uh, tinky examples right so view routes views we have index layout parties whatever authors but this is not the language which we basic to do app.js config.rethink slash config.js what is config.js Oh, we can pass all this configuration over here that's that's awesome so what we can do is we can just say 
uh, we can just copy this thing, right? And here we can pass this. Uh, I've pasted this in the wrong place. Yeah, that's the default port. I think auth key. We do not have an auth key, and the database which we want is is what is bank. Right. So let's say we have done this. Right. So created a pool connected to localhost. Okay. So it 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 uh, it kind of did the did the it it can it is connected now right now. So I'll just show you right now. So you can see uh, it says created a pool and connected to the, this port and the server started successfully, right? So that's awesome. Can we combine this? I don't know. Okay. So the next thing what we'll do is we'll 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 we'll, we'll very quickly test this out. So let's go new connect new and let's let's go over here only. Let's modify this up. So we'll have API version one create create user, right? And then it would be a post request and the body will be a json body right so let's provide a json body to this wait why the why the hell this doesn't expands can we do this yeah that's fine so we'll have a name i think we'll have a first name let's see what what all things we do we need in this so in the route we need first name last name email id so let's copy that from there paste it over here let's remove all these things we We'll have to specify them up. Let's remove this one as well. Let's remove this one as well. Right. So next thing is. So we'll have to actually do this as well. So. To make it a JSON. So because it gets sent as a JSON. Uh, so uh, I'll be creating a username Jay. Last name will be Prakash, and the email will be Jay at the rate gmail dot com, right? And let's send the request. Uh, I don't know will it work or not. Like let's see. This, this is the server, right? Uh, so oh wait, five hundred internal server error. We have an internal server error, and I don't know what. Uh, Achha, invalid json the json is invalid wait what is the invalid json okay now this thing should be all right okay so we have the request fulfilled and this is like the 200 so we were sending the wrong so it says user created successfully and these are the details you can see id has been populated automatically as i have said so let's see like uh, where does this data went and uh, how things are happening so first of all what we'll do is we'll go to administration and we'll, we'll see uh, data dashboards uh, servers we have this one data explorers uh tables you can see uh we have we have bank database test database and this is something else so this is the bank database which we have we have we have the user collection and there if you just explore there's the data which we inserted which is this one right so we can create the users pretty much successfully right that's awesome we created our first user in rethink db without any any hassle of course we had one hassle where we got the internal server error, but things are good now okay wait why why is this thing coming okay so the next thing what we want to do is we actually want to uh what can we do we created the user we want to add transactions for that user so that the user could deposit or take out uh money right so that's important so let's let's actually create it uh, create a service for that so oh, 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 oh. where's the service here's the service uh, let's collapse things up so next thing is uh, we'll have a create transaction uh, service so we'll have create transaction create transaction service which will help you to create transactions now how, how would you do that uh, like transaction detail transaction detail right so what you can do is you can transfer uh, money from one account to another account in case of like withdrawal what will what would it will do is it would have one thing which is external right so if like I'll, I'll explain you right so how it would work is wait let me think this is a transfer this is like there will be a deposit as well okay which is also a transfer right now hmm. 
okay so let's 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 write a function for deposit money right for depositing money in your account so uh, what we'll do is again we'll return a promise we will say new promise resolve reject right and next thing what we'll do is we'll, we'll we actually need to modify this user so let's see how can we do that so we'll have to see tinky documentation again so how we are supposed to modify a user uh, do we have any update quick start we have over here okay so we have get right then we have get join author then it's true then we have delete do we have update save all do we have update uh let's search for this update no there's no update man we have save so hmm we have no update i mean that's that's shocking relations importing thingy we've already done that uh how we are supposed to update things i don't know thingy yeah, achha, it's not tinky it's thinky yaar. come on just forgive me for like pronouncing thinky wrong can i have an update come on okay this changes then create model stringify i cannot find a way to update this get joined oh come on it's the same thing right get model will get you the model okay so let's uh first just to refresh our mind uh, let's create a get all user um function so let get all users right so we'll have nothing will there's no requirement for this right so return new uh promise uh promise will have two things resolve and reject right and uh we can have users is equal to user dot get all i think this get all function for sure it, this, there's a function called get all for sure right so and we can make this async await for the here so async and we can make await right and then what we can do is we can so we'll actually have to wrap this in a try catch because it this thing could throw error like if database operation fails this could literally throw an error and if it is failed if it fails we'll simply reject it and we'll say error just get lost and if it is okay then we'll resolve it with the users right so that's pretty much it we have the get all user uh service now what we can do is in the routes we can just import this get all user come on Huh, we haven't exported this come on oh, so now we exported this so now we can have like get all users and what we can do is we can have a route so we'll have router dot get request all user all underscore user right and we could have like a request and a response and a next right so we can we can again have a try catch right so uh, in here we can say users is equal to get all users right and that's pretty much it so we definitely need an await for this so we'll make it async and this one await right uh this should be get right oh there's an error a w a t await spelling is galat okay so we have this over here next you sh we should have users right and then we can resolve the users so we can say resolve so come on man oh we don't have to resolve it over here so we can say response dot send message user fetched successfully right next thing what we can have is we can have users over here okay 
and then we have errors right so what we can do is we can just uh, say neck error okay there you go we have the all user route made so let's see does it work or we have committed some kind of mistake so th that's a get request right so we can say new request and we can just uh, update this with what our server url you can say localhost and uh, port 8000 slash api slash version one slash all users oh come on so it's all user i think oh there's this is empty man this, this it says there's no user oh that's impossible come on it's wrong we have one user we know that right oh that's bad that's bad that's bad how can we how can we fetch all the users i don't know let's see the documentation we should have something right get table name define uh, as many as one belongs to post pre query method get model validate all save all uh, add relation get feed get join execute then we have uh, errors quick start save all so it saves then get this post dot author dot delete then then so this is simply get and it's the name id name let's get maybe get all is not a function get is a function will this work let's see let's send the request again uh let's see does it work or not there was an internal server error uh mm -mm -mm. so this is not surely not a function uh we have an error in the index file as well because this is not logging our is prod is actually is equal to prod is not equal to prod then is prod ah this is wrong you know this shouldn't be like in the production we don't want to log so this should, like, should be not right now we can actually get what is the error right so uh if we send the request right we get like a long error so the error is it says get takes one argument provided zero so it takes the user i id which we don't have so get all like uh get all is a function man come on how can you not recognize that function get all is a function for sure all right so uh, it's it's returning empty user mm, let's see what can be done uh, 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 uh. can we use filter and all all those functions is that possible let's see uh, what if we just go and use all the default uh, ray think db functions so if we could do that that would be awesome so what we can do is we can just we'll say filter right and we'll pass an empty object over there so that would basically give us all the all the uh see that's there so i didn't know that actually we can use all the rethink db uh, filters that's awesome so we have everything there right so it, it works as expected so you can see this is like uh this is like uh all the users which we have so currently we have one user so that's that that's there right so yeah that's pretty much it the next thing is we actually want to update uh what 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 do we what did we want it to do we want to deposit money and like uh, withdraw money right so let's see what we can how can we do that so this works now uh we can have like two more routes so we can say route dot post slash uh see i know real banks would never do something like this but i'm just making like things to learn so please deposit right s-i-t-e right and this would take uh an uh, uh, user id right so you actually have to give a user id uh which 
uh, which in then will be updated right so that's the user id where the things will be updated so okay hmm so we'll have request we'll have response we'll have next so but first but first let's make the uh make the service for this so what we'll do is we'll just close all these we'll go to services create one more service and we'll call it deposit money right and here we'll have request we'll have response we'll have next right and we have deposit money function so what we have to do is we have to search for the user which has that id and then insert inside that so uh okay rethink uh, we can see official doc of rethink i think that's fine so let's search for update so we have update uh single selection not update uh, okay So what we can do is you can just get it, then paste the ID, and then say update, and we can just pass in hash map over there. Uh, do we like r dot hash map? Is that important? I mean, to give. I'm not sure. Well, let's try to do this. Okay. So if this works, then that's awesome, right? So this this is how it's done. So what we'll do is we will import, not import we will okay this is service right so we will not have request response anything like that it will have user id and amount which you want to do and the type right so the type will be deposit or uh, deposit or withdraw right so if uh, so first of all what we have to do is we have to actually fetch that user so what we'll do uh, what we'll do is we will say that uh, let user we, we, let's make this async first uh, because that's important and next thing which is important is let's make uh, this uh, let's cover this whole thing in try catch and we, what we can do is uh, wait this will return promise what am i doing return new promise right and we can have resolve and reject right we have resolved reject next thing what we can do is we can just have that try catch over there and we can make this whole thing an async function so that we can use await over here and we can we could have like the current users account okay users account right so we can say that user dot uh user dot uh we can even we we can just get and then uh, we could have the id so we can say user id right? that's the user's account and then what we can do is we can say await right the next next thing what we can do is we can have uh, we can have the amount so we can say new amount new mp is equal to user acc dot amount plus equal to so it will be plus if it is uh, if the type is equal to deposit right then uh, then it will be user on the plus amount otherwise it will be user acc dot amount minus amount right there you go we have we have the small function which actually uh, gives you the new amount right and then we have to update this how will you how will we do that simple see what we can do is we can say let result is equal to user dot is equal to user dot um, get same user id dot uh, update uh, hmm. import wait not import let 
r is equal to require rethink db right so re this rethink db automatically gets imported when you import tinky that's important to remember right so then what we can do is r dot hash we don't have that hash map function wait where is that hash map function we don't have hash map function i think it's not important what we can do is we can just simply pass this like this and we can say amount is equal to new empty and this would work fine should work fine i mean right uh let's see and we what we can do is we can resolve this result and we can await this because doing this would take a little bit of time right uh yeah that's cool so next thing what we can do is we can reject this in case of any error which which happens uh, during this whole thing right so we have deposit a money function we need user amount uh, we need user id amount and type uh, let's not actually do this because i think there are three objects and let, let them come from like the usual way so we'll we'll say try we'll say catch why didn't do we do this in a single uh thing right and then we'll say next if there is any error right and we'll say uh we'll create a validation model so you can say joy dot uh, validate uh come on joy dot object right what what we should have we should have a user id which should be joy dot string right dot and then we should have a type which should again be joy dot string uh, then we should have a amount right which should again be joy dot number right there you go so you have this joy dot amount dot uh, okay a route dot post is not a function okay this is not route this is a router right that's important okay so we do not need this one we can just remove this one okay so the next thing what we want to do is we actually want to validate the body so we'll we'll as we have done above so you can see we have like the error and the value over here you can see error and the value right similar thing which we'll we'll, we'll get over here so we can say validation dot validate right and we can give request dot body over here right so it will it will validate the body uh user cannot see send any extra things with with like just to blow to the server or something like that that is very uh, that, that makes very much safe for this so if there is any error it will take it to next with that error and if there is none so if there is no error what we can do is we can say create user right wait uh this takes separately like to user id amount and type so we'll have to do it like value dot user id value dot amount and value dot type right so we have user id amount and type that's awesome okay and this will definitely give us some results so again uh, right so we'll be writing await over there and 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 what we'll have to make this function async for this to work so the next thing what we can do is we can just uh the response that send uh message uh amount deposited amount deposited successfully wait this is not deposited this is like a transaction right the, re the reason is because uh, see we can deposit and withdraw both with the type right so if we have deposit type it will it will deposit or withdraw right so we just just, just change this name to transaction CATI1 right right so next thing what we have to do is we have to import that from here right and then use this use that not on the create user but like this one right so we have the transaction and uh, I don't know why was I using create user but that should be transaction that there you have the result and you can send this result of course you which you shouldn't but I'm doing this right so we have all user and a transaction uh, post request so let's see does this even works or not so let's go to the thunder client uh, let's go over here instead of create user it will be transaction right 
The spelling is wrong. I know I know that transaction spelling is wrong. C A T I one, right? Let's copy this. Right. We have post request, we will need few things. Uh first of all we'll need uh, we will need uh, what we'll need a user id right so let's we'll, we can get that from this uh uh this thing so this is the id which we want for now so we can just copy paste this wait 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 wait, wait, wait. from where can i make this okay so we have the user id over here then we need an amount let's say a 15,000 rupees i just want to transfer and then what we can do is we can have a type so we can have deposit as a type right so that's awesome so let's send the request let's see what do we got get we get amount deposited successfully uh oh it it it, it like it kind of did the thing it it gives you the updated uh updated document as well so now you have like the 1500 uh, as the transaction right so you can verify this as well so this was pretty much successful this deposit we can even withdraw some money so we can say like okay we want to withdraw some money so uh, we want to actually do what we want to withdraw some money right uh, let's withdraw like uh, 3000 from this or uh, uh, 3000 something from this right so what we can do is we can just uh, have this and we can say withdraw right and we can send request I think there was some internal server error so the error is user is not defined in where reference error user is not defined services 33 it says this user is not defined this is user acc there's no user of course how will the user be defined oh come on uh so we have fixed that mistake and let's try it again oh there's again some mistake a reading amount undefined value 33 uh, we have a lot of errors in 33 so it's oh, it's two two times you know why we have like this two two times okay now it's fine now it should work fine let's see uh we, it's completed it's done you can see now it has like uh 11,766 rupees um like that's the amount so we have learned like getting the request we have learned like creating the post uh, this should be an update request but still like uh okay so uh, we have learned i uh, like updating right so let's let's learn do you want to learn delete deletion i'm not sure yeah we could right oh, i'm tired Ugh. okay so uh, you can see our api running by the way i just want to show you the server this is the request uh and it it works fine i think most part and yeah that's pretty much it delete one is also i just want to i'll just give you an overview it's very simple right so it, it goes like if you go to tinky documentation right uh, and there's there's like delete as well it's a command delete can you see that so it's like this so you have table dot get and you get the table and you say delete and that's simple and you don't need to run it actually so run command is automatically executed by the tinky so you just need to call that delete and that's pretty much it you are you're good to go you are good to go there right that's awesome right that works by the way i just want to tell you one thing uh, like in real world app if you want to build this there are few suggestions so in the model right we have user model and we have this stinky over here just extract this to a new uh, class maybe a database class and like just export this.